Hi, Annie and everybody. This is a new um, non-synchronous English lesson, advanced level. And uh, today we are going to work on um, vocabulary or grammar, better to say, and also vocabulary on <laughs> shopping. But first of all, we are going to work on future forms in English, different ways to express uh, plans, or ideas or requests, permissions, etc. Uh, in the future time. So we are going to go to our book, um, which we usually work with, and we are going to take a look at exercise three. Here we've got um, some of the some the different forms, different waves to ways to express um, things, plans uh, in the future. Last class, we had been working on, for example, future will, we have been working on present continuous, going to form, um, pres uh, future perfect, a uh, future continuous, we have been working with different tenses. And today we are going to apply them to, to, to bring them, them back to our memories and um, and to to take a look uh, whether one of another of the options is possible. Um, this will be the exercise we are going to do. Annie, in your case, you can go to page ninety three and take a, a look at it, as well as uh, have in, in at hand um, the this one. I'm going to change what I'm sharing. This page from the grammar summary 176, uh, where we have these different future forms. Here, there's a summary. You can pause the video here and take a look at the different forms if you're not Annabelle, and you can do the exercise with us. Um, we have different forms and page, next page, sorry where we have the future forms um, continuous and perfect, okay? So we're going to do this exercise. Meanwhile, we decide which of these different uses we are, we are um, applying in each case, okay? So, I'm going to read the task. Look at the following sentences and choose the most appropriate future form. Number one, it says, I'll apply or I'm going to apply. These are the two possible options for a job at the local hospital. I've been thinking about it for ages. So we have to decide which is the better form. Okay, we can say, for example, and now you can go back to the language summary I was recently sharing and take a look and check at item number three, where it says we use going to and the present continues to talk about things that have already been decided. So in this case, this would be one of these options. So I'm going to apply would be the best of these two options. So we have item number three from the grammar summary. Number two, I'm sure he will leave option one or he will have left the company soon. Again, we take a look at the grammar summary and this would be the best option. We are working on item number one, which says um, we use going to or shall or will, will is this case, plus infinitive for predicting something when there is no present evidence. Number three, if he isn't careful, that little boy, option one, is going to fall or option two is falling. And hurt himself. <laughs> and hurt himself. Okay. In this case, 
we have this option as the better one. Since item number four is use going to to talk about things that are certain to happen. Why do we know this? We know this because there is present evidence. I'm seeing that boy. So number, uh, what did I say? Number four, right? Yeah, number four would be the, um, the item that represents this case. Number four, this time next week, we are going to lie, option one, or we'll be lying, we will be lying, in the Australian sun. In this case, what are we, we using? We may think, for example, option two, because it says um, we use shall or will for promises, treats, offers, and requests. Maybe we can think this about uh, as, a, as a promise, for example. But the best option would be number six, where we have that the information that we use the future continues will or shall plus b plus ing to say that an action will be in progress at a definite time in the future so i will be by then lying that action will be in progress when next week in this definite time so we are going to lie will be the choice. I was thinking number five, I was, I was talking to Paul and apparently the whole family is going to his house for Christmas or will go to his house for Christmas. This one might seem tricky because we have this apparently word that it's kind of, um, uh, like it depends a little bit on this word, the answer. What about here? We have, for example, let me see my, my notes. Um, on item number three, we have got this information. It says, we use going to, uh, yes, the whole family is going to, we can also use the present continue, but, but in this case is going to, to talk about things that have already been decided. So we can think that the fact that his family is spending Christmas uh, with Paul has already been decided, but they say apparently, right? So maybe this is not so, uh, determined, de determined, uh, like, um, I don't know, maybe they will spend, they will spend Christmas with him, but maybe they won't. So in this case, I, I've read number three, item number three. Item number five says, we use will or shall plus an infinitive form to talk about future actions decided at the time of speaking, of speaking. And since it says, I was talking to Paul and apparently, so this is not absolutely, absolutely decided, maybe. Um, we can also use will go. So in this case, it depends. I think in my personal opinion, you may disagree, of course, I'm not the owner of the truth. So please argue with me, <laughs> discuss with me, and let's decide together which is the best option. In my opinion, it depends on that cir circumstance. The thing is that, okay, if we say it's going to his house, what we are saying is that this has been already decided and they are going to definitely go for Christmas. This would be option number three. But we can also say that this is not so decided and um, that they have been deciding it while they were talking, Paul and I and me, 
I was talking, says. So that could be an option too. Grammarly is correct. In some other cases, we cannot, for example, if he isn't, car if he isn't careful, that little boy is falling and hurts himself. That is not grammarly correct, okay? But in this case, both, both options are okay. It depends on what do we want to emphasize. Okay, number six. Having said this, we can continue. I hope you are finishing or you will have finished the painting by the time we get back. In this case, what we have to, to take in account is that, okay, we have option A, uh, are finishing, present continuous. Option B, will have finished. So this is a perfect, future perfect, a perfect form. When do we use future perfect? When we want to describe something, it says item number seven, that will be completed before a definite time in the future. So this would be the case. We hope that will be completed before we come back. Um, so this will be the option and this would be number seven, the example of the future form number seven. Okay, um, number seven in this exercise, in our exercise, uh, I tell you what, um, ah, sorry, I forgot. I was going to, to say, why not this one? Because hope you are finishing. Present uh, continuous would be, we can, we can see present continuous use in the uh, ex, uh, um, item three, for example. We use going to and the present continuous to talk about things that have already been decided. Okay, yes, I, I've decided. I want you to finish that by the time I got back, go get back. But it's not my decision. It's not my choice, actually. I depend on that you have or haven't finished it. Another use of the present continuous would be, um, okay, it only says that because in the, in the, all, all the, the other items says, um, do not use present continuous in certain cases. Um, and then item number six, which is future continue, we need a will or a shall. And in this case, we don't have uh, any will or shall. So this are finishing is not a choice, okay? Number seven, and we finish this exercise with this, with it. Um, I tell you what, if you're getting him some CDs for his birthday, option A, A, I'll get him a tie or I'm going to get him a tie, which is the difference. Remember that going to is used, both are grammarly correct, but going to is used to express something that has already been decided. And apparently, because of the context, we can think that this is a recently made choice, an instant decision, a decision that is made in the moment that this person is talking, talking because he says, I tell you what. So even though both options might be okay, what we have to choose is I'll get, because it's an instant decision. And the item that, sorry, and the item that represents this choice is number five, which says we use will or shall plus an infinitive to talk about future actions decided at the time of speaking. So this would be the um, options that you should choose in each of these cases. How was it? Do you have a different option? Do you want 
we to discuss about it, that would be really interesting. Okay, very good. With this, we finish for, by now, a little bit with these future forms we have been working with Annie last class uh, and today's. And we are going to skip to another topic as I let you know in advance, vocabulary. We are going to work on vocabulary on shopping, okay? And I propose you to take a look at these sentences. And what we have to do is to match each of these ones with a shop to a shop, sorry, below in which you might hear it being said. Where can you hear these phrases? In which of these shops can you hear these phrases? I recommend you to stop the video now to try to choose um, or to match them and uh, then we will work it together. So here I go with the answer. Number one, it says, I only bought this last week and already the heel has come off. This, you may hear it in a shoe shop. A heel is that part for, of a shoe, in general, ladies' shoe. We've already used, I'm going to cross it out, shoe shop. Number two, could you have, could I have, sorry, could I have a dozen red roses, please? I'm making the letters bigger because it's kind of small. It was kind of small. Number two, could I have, could I have a dozen red roses, please? This would be a florist. So letter A. Number three, do you have anything to help with a sore, sore throat and a runny nose? This, you might hear it in a chemist. This is the English form of pharmacia. Also, chemical, chemistry is related to chemico, chimica, not as in Spanish, but since in a pharmacia, the, the pills, the medicine works with chemistry, um, in English, we call that chemist as well. So this would be D, number three, D. Number four, a large brown loaf and a couple of jam donuts, please. Okay, a loaf is the same, same it's, a, it's a synonym for bread. The difference is that eh, a loaf is, is a one piece, big, one big piece of bread that you cut in slides. And maybe bread might be smaller pieces. Uh, we have white loaf and brown loaf. Brown loaf is the one that we call in Spanish integral, yeah? So a large, a big one, large brown loaf. And donuts, they sound as they mean donuts, but they you can write it as donuts, as we can see in in Los Simpson in the Simpsons, um, or as like this one, donuts. Uh, and jam donuts seems like the um, bolas de fraile, our bolas de fraile in in. But you can hear this at a baker's. In a panaderia, baker, panadero, baker's, panaderia. Mmm, tasty. Number five, I'd like to send this first class. And do you have any of those special airmail letters? This, of course, letter is definitely associated with a post office. Letter F. So we have a uh, first class, yes, to send 
something first class, as in Spanish we say um, certificada, con seguimiento. And um, airmail letters, las, eh, envío aéreo, vía aérea, we say in Spanish. Number six, I'm afraid this checkout is only for customers with fewer than 10 items. We can hear this at a supermarket. So a checkout would be the place where you pay, you give your, your, your um, purchases and you pay for them before you take them away. Um, and the last one, of course, we only have one choice, uh, uh, green grocers, verdulería, um, green, it's verde, verdura, vegetables in general, or they, they are associated with green <laughs> color. Mm. Um, grocer, it's like to grow, to make something grow. So uh, the, the, the vocabulary reminds us of, um, or, or actually they are like associated mm. with, uh, related to the, the, the things they want to name, right? So um, we only have this choice, but let's see if this is logical, because if we have only this choice and the, the option left is, I only bought this last week and they have a heel that uh, has already come off. Okay, it's not something there was wrong. But this says, could you give me a couple of these avocados and a pound of the mushrooms, please? So definitely this is, this might be heard at a grocery, uh, green grocers. Um, letter B, avocado, uh, what we say, palta. In some Spanish um, speakers uh, um, and some other Spanish speakers country, um, they say avocado to the palta. Um, and mushrooms, hongos. Okay. Very, very good. So with this, I think we have uh, a little work to do. I'm going to stop the video over here so it's not neither boring, neither too heavy to upload it, it in, the, in the YouTube channel. And um, if you have any doubt, uh, Annie, please contact me by WhatsApp or email. And if you're not Annie and you're watching this video and it's interesting for you, you can also share your thoughts and comments on below. And I will be glad to read you. Okay, um, so Annie, see you next week. I hope you enjoy. And the rest of you, see you next video. Bye-bye, see you, hugs.